All right, for 17, uh, here we have a cubic on top of uh, a binomial, a linear binomial. So again, we're going to do synthetic division, but notice that we have some missing terms. So on all the ones before, we had every single term in order. We had the x squared term, we had the linear term, we had the constant. Here we have a, a cubic term and a constant, so it looks like we're missing some. Uh, we can write this as 1x cubed, there are 0x squareds, there are zero x's, and there's negative one for the constant. So when you're doing synthetic division, you need to keep track of all the terms. And if terms are missing, put zeros in those spots. And then we're going to put a little box here. And what's going to go in the box? So since we're dividing here by a linear, it's x plus 2. Uh, in the box is going to be negative 2. We can use synthetic division as long as we're dividing by a linear term here. We just put in what the zero is and it will work out. If we divide by something higher, then you'll probably have to do long division, but this is gonna work out for us. So now we do the same thing, bring the one down, multiply, it's gonna be negative two, add, it's negative two, multiply, it's gonna be four, add going down, it's four, and that's gonna give you negative eight, and it looks like that is negative nine. The negative nine is gonna be the remainder, usually I box that off. Remember that when you divide by x to the 1, it's going to go down by 1 degree. So if you started out with a cubic, now we end up with a quadratic. We can rewrite the integral as 1x squared minus 2x's plus 4. And then the remainder would be negative 9 over the uh, divisor, which was x plus 2 dx. So this is going to change to this. Now we should be set. We're ready to take the antiderivative of each of these terms. So we've got now four parts. The antiderivative of x squared is going to be x cubed over 3 minus 2x. It's going to go up to 2x squared divided by 2. So that's going to be just minus x squared. 4 is going to go to 4x. And this one is going to give us negative 9 natural log of the bottom x plus 2 in absolute value, and then plus c at the end. So there's what our answer is going to look like. All right, next we get to partial fractions. So this is going to be another way of rewriting uh, a division problem as a sum or difference. And so we're basically going to be splitting up this fraction into separate fractions. So instead of having a, a fraction where we have a top and a bottom, and again, we can't do u substitution because if we let u equal this, well, then... Uh, you know, we're going to have some problems with, the, with our du, and then we're going to have to replace the top here. So uh, we can't do division because we can see that the, the bottom has a bigger degree than the top. And so this is a case where we're going to have to use partial fractions. Partial fractions is going to be is going to work where we can factor the bottom. So notice that x squared minus x minus 6 can be factored. And so when we see these factors, we're going to be able to split up one fraction into multiple fractions. Uh, so for this one, we got a factor x squared minus x minus 6. So let's just look at what that is. That's going to be, uh, they need to be two factors here, two binomials. x and x, they have to multiply. They give negative 6, they have to add up to negative 1. So you might think, okay, x minus 3 and x plus 2. And on top we have 3x plus 11 dx. So this idea of partial fraction says that if we have these factors in the bottom, we should be able to write this so that we can break this up. 3x plus 11, uh, instead of writing this as one fraction with two factors on the bottom, we can write it as a sum of fractions. And... For every factor that we have down here, that's going to go in the denominator. So we're going to have a fraction over x minus 3, and we're going to have a fraction over x plus 2. And we have to find out what these new numerators are going to be. So for right now, we're going to call them a and b. If the, fact, if the denominators are linear, then the a's on top, or the a's and b's and the constants on top, are just going to be constants. They're just going to be numbers. Uh, we're not going to get to more complicated examples, but if you would have quadratic factors on the bottom, then you would have linear things on top, and so on. 
And if you have multiple ones, so for example, if I had something like 1 over x minus 3 squared, x plus 2 cubed, uh, then we would have to include factors for every uh, power. So we'd have 1 for x minus 3, 1 for x minus 3 squared, 1 for x plus 2, 1 for x plus 2 squared, 1 for x plus 2 cubed, and so on. And we'd have to find all these coefficients on top for a, b, c, and d, and so on. So if you have them raised to a power, then you would have to split it up even more times. But uh, for simplicity's sake, we're going to start with this guy. It just has two factors. Both of them are raised to the first power. And we can write this as something over x plus x minus 3 and something over x plus 2. And we've got to find what a and b are. a and b, in this case, again, are going to be constants because we got a linear factor in the bottom. So what we're going to do is to multiply everything by the LCD. And what's the LCD going to be? Well, it's going to be x minus 3, x plus 2. So imagine I'm multiplying everything on both sides here by x minus 3, x plus 2. x minus 3, x plus 2. Okay. Usually we won't write this because, okay, what's going to happen here on the left? The whole denominator will cancel out. That's good. Uh, here, the x minus 3 is going to cancel out, and we're going to have, uh, I'm going to write the thing first, I guess. x plus 2 I'll write first times a. So the x minus 3 is here, we cancel, so I'd have x plus 2 times a. Over here, the x plus 2 is going to cancel, so I'm going to have x minus 3 times b. Okay, so now we want to simplify it. Now, we basically have an equation that has both a and b, and we need to solve for both of these. And the trick here is that we want to zero these out. So we're going to let x equal a number so that something will disappear. Well, if I want this to disappear, and I want it to zero out or become zero, what should x be? We're going to let x equal negative 2. And we're going to plug negative 2 in for all the x's. So that when I plug negative 2 into here, this will all become 0. So we have 3 times negative 2. I'm going to write it out this time, but eventually we're going to do this in our head. So we're going to put negative 2 in for all the x's. 3 times negative 2 plus 11. Here, this is going to become 0. Here, we're going to have negative 2 minus 3 times b. And solve this now for b. So this is going to be negative 5b. Over here, it's negative 6 plus 11. That's 5. 5 is equal to negative 5b. And that's going to give us that b is equal to negative 1. So we're going to use that in a second. Now we do the same thing to solve for a. If I want to solve for a, well, then i got to zero out this part. So what am I going to let x equal? x is going to be... If I want this to be 0, I want x to be 3. So that when I put 3 in, this is going to become 0, and I'm going to be left with is this side and this side. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus 11 is going to be 20. So I'm going to have 20 equals uh, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5a. That tells us that a is going to be equal to what? a is going to equal 4. Now we know what the numerators are. For the a, we're going to put a 4. And for the b, we're going to put negative 1. So we can rewrite our integral that we started with. So going back up here, we're going to split this up into two fractions. One of them has a numerator, or has a denominator of x minus 3. And that's a. We said a is 4. And the other one is going to have uh, x plus 2 in the bottom. And b here is negative 1 dx. And we can take the antiderivative of each part. So take the antiderivative there. That's going to be 4 natural log, absolute value of x minus 3, minus 1 natural log. So since it's 1 times, we'll just put nat minus natural log of x plus 2 plus c. And we've got our answer. That's it. 21 and 22, you're going to write with
partial fractions. So 21, we're going to have to factor it. How does it factor? So it's going to factor into x minus 6 and x plus 4. So we're going to have 2x minus 7 over uh, x minus 6, x plus 4 equals a over x minus 6 plus b over x plus 4. I think it's important to write this step out so we don't forget where the a and the b are going to go. And you're going to multiply by the LCD. Now hopefully it becomes a little bit easier to multiply by the LCD. The LCD is going to be whatever we have in the bottom here because we want this all to cancel. So it's just going to be x minus 6 and x plus 4. We're going to have 2x minus 7. Uh, here, the x minus 6 would cancel out, and so we're going to have x plus 4 times a plus x minus 6 times b. We're going to let x equal something so that one of these will cancel out. So let's go with the 6 first so we can solve for a. So if we let x equal 6, plug it in. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 7 is going to be 5. And over here, we're going to have 6 plus 4, that's 10, A. That tells us that A is equal to, solve this for A, 5 divided by 10, it's going to reduce to 1 half. So now we have the A value. And we do another substitution. Now we can find out what B is. So we want this to go away. So we're going to let X equal negative 4. Plug it in. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Negative 8 minus 7 is negative 15. That's going to equal negative 4 minus 6 is going to be negative 10b. That's going to give us b is equal to 3 halves. We're going to rewrite the integral. So remember the whole idea here is that we want to split up the integral so that it looks like this. So we're going to split up into two fractions. One denominator is x minus 6, one is x plus 4. And here you get fractions, but I'm just going to put those fractions on the top, even though it doesn't look quite right because it's a complex fraction. But it's going to make the integration a lot easier. Here, a was 1 half, and that's what we got going on above the x minus 6. So put 1 half here, put 3 halves here, dx. You could write the 1 on the top and then the 2 down here, but... Uh, then it might be a little bit harder to think about how to integrate it. This is going to make it really easy because it's just one half natural log of x minus 6. What's the antiderivative here? Well, it's the top number, 3 halves, times the natural log of the bottom, x plus 4, plus c. Okay, for 23 and 24, now you have three factors on top. So... Same thing, except now we're going to break it up into three fractions because we've got three factors. So when we have 2x minus 1 over the LCD, I'm just going to write LCD here, we're going to split it up into A over x plus 2 plus B over x minus 4 plus C over x plus 3. And we're going to multiply these all by the LCD. If I multiply by the LCD, here I'm going to have just 2x minus 1. Here, the x plus 2s would cancel, and I would have a times x minus 4 times x plus 3. Here, for the second term, I'm going to have b times x plus 2 times x plus 3. And for the last, I'm going to have c, and I'm going to have x plus 2 and x minus 4. And we're going to do the same trick. We want uh, to zero out. So what am I going to let x equal? See, I want to solve for a here. And I want these guys to go away. Well, you can see that these both have the x plus 2 in common. So if I let x equal negative 2, for instance, then both of these are going to go away. If I put negative 2 in here, on this side, I'm going to have negative 5. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. So on this side, if I let x equal negative 2, I'm going to have negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is minus 1 is negative 5. 
Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. So we're going to have negative 6 here times a. That's going to leave us with a is equal to 5, 6. Okay, next. Uh, what if I want to get b by itself? Well, then I want these two to cancel. They both have an x minus 4, so let's let x equal 4. Then over here, I'm going to have 2 times 4 minus 1. 2 times 4 minus 1 is 7. And then uh, we're solving this for b. 4 plus 2 is 6. 4 plus 3 is 7. 6 times 7 is 42b. That's going to give us a fraction for b. b is equal to 1 6. And then we're going to let x equal, now I've got to solve for c. So I want these guys to go away. Let x equal what? These both have an x plus 3 in common. So if I put negative 3, these will zero out. And I'll just be left with this term. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 minus 1. It's going to be negative 7. And over here, uh, negative 3 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 3 times negative 4 is negative 7. Negative 7 times negative 1 is positive 7 C. That's going to leave that C is equal to negative 1. Now we found A, B, and C. We can rewrite our integral as, if we look back up here, this tells us how to set it up. So it's 5 6 over x plus 2 plus uh, 1 6 over x minus 4 plus C, which is negative 1 over x plus 3 dx. And that's going to tell us the coefficients for each of the logarithms. So we're going to have 5, 6, natural log, x plus 2, plus 1, 6, natural log, x minus 4, minus 1, natural log of x plus 3, plus c. And there we go. 25. Uh, here we need to factor the bottom. And this one's going to have, again, three factors. I think one of them is going to be uh, a double root. So when I factor this guy, uh, I get I can take out an x squared on the bottom. I'm going to be left with x minus 5. So remember what I said, that when you are doing this partial fractions, you need to have a fraction or denominator for every power as well. So this is has x squared. So this is going to have to have a fraction with a denominator of x and x squared. So when I split this up, I'm going to have to write it as uh, 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 over the LCD. And we're going to have a over x plus b over x squared plus c over x minus 5. So basically we got three factors here. We got x squared, so I need to have an x. I need to have an x squared. If this was x cubed, then I would have to have x, x squared, and x cubed all the way up to the highest exponent. This exponent here is just x minus 5 to the 1, so we just have to include the x minus 5. And now we're ready to go. Here we have to find a, b, and c, so we can split it up. And we're going to multiply by the LCD first. So on the left, when we multiply by the LCD, we're just going to be left with the numerator. And then this is going to get multiplied by x times x times x minus 5. So this is going to be a times x times x minus 5 plus b times x minus 5 plus c times x squared. So again, this is the LCD, so hopefully you can see what's going to cancel out every time. Here, one of the x's is going to cancel, so you're going to have x times x minus 5. Here, the x squared would cancel, so you have x minus 5. And here, the x minus 5 would cancel, so you have c times x squared. All right, so we have to zero this out. So what can we let x equal so that some of these terms will go away? Well, first case might be 0. That's the easiest one to figure out. When we let x equal 0, this is going to become pretty easy to evaluate. This is going to go away, and this is going to go away. So if we put 0 in for x, on the left we're just going to get 5. This is going to become 0, this is going to become 0, 
this is going to become negative 5 times b. So that means that b is equal to negative 1. Now we're going to zero out something else. So uh, let's let x equal 5 because then this will go away and this will go away. They'll both be 0. You got to put 5 into this. So we got to do 5 squared is 25. 25 times 3 is 75. Minus uh, 4 times 5 is 20. Let's see, 75 minus 20 is 55. Plus 5, that comes out to 60. Boom. 60 equals, uh, this is going to go away, this is going to go away. 5 squared, 5 times 5 is 25. We're going to get 25c. Divide both sides by 25. After you reduce, 60 over 25 is going to reduce to 12 over 5. Now what? Now we're still stuck though, because how do we find out what A is? A disappeared both times. But wait, don't give up, because now that we know B and C, we can plug them back in to this guy. So we know now the values of B and C, and we can plug them back into this equation. So let's do that. So now we're going to have 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 equals, uh, what do we have here? A, we don't know. So this is A, and uh, in this case, I'm going to multiply this guy out. So I'm going to write this as x squared minus 5x. We'll see y here in a second. B, we know what B is. B is negative 1. So let's put that in, times x minus 5. And C, we know what C is. That's going to be 12 fifths times x squared. So... We're going to have this polynomial, and it's got some x squared and some x's on this side and some constants, and here it's going to have some x squared. Uh, a here is going to be important. And where does the a appear? So let's simplify this a little bit more. This is going to be a x squared minus... 5 times a times x minus x plus 5 plus 12 over 5 x squared. So if you look at this, a appears as the coefficient of x squared. Here's another x squared. Here's another x squared. So when we look at all these x squareds, the coefficients that we have, we're saying that 3 has to equal whatever a is plus 12 fifths, because when we combine these x squares together, we have to end up with 3x squared. I guess likewise, I could do negative 4x, and then this guy, uh, and then all the x's, and put them together, but this one is going to be a little bit harder. I think it's just easier to look at the coefficients. So when you have a polynomial, and you have coefficients and variables, or things to solve for in front, remember that the coefficients have to add up, uh, and x squareds have to add up with x squareds. And so here, 3x squareds are going to equal ax squared plus 12 over 5x squared. So basically, we're going to have 3 is equal to whatever a is plus 12 fifths. This is equal to this plus this. And that's going to allow us to solve for a. So take 3 minus 12 fifths, reduce it you're going to end up with a is three-fifths. And now we have a, b, and c. So you just got to put them back where we found them. So a, remember, was a over x. So let's rewrite our integral. Three-fifths over x plus uh, b was negative one over x squared. And c was 12-fifths over x minus 5. Take the antiderivative of each of these, and we're going to have, this is 1 over x, so the antiderivative of that is just natural log of x. Uh, this one you might want to think of as negative 1x to the negative 2. So here you can use the power rule, bump it up a power. It's going to be negative 1x to the negative 1 divided by negative 1, so it's going to become plus x to the negative 1, which you could write as 1 over x. And this one is going to become 12 fifths, natural log of x minus 5 plus c. And we've got our answer.